Okay, I'm. You've still disabled my screen yes, sharing. Yes. Now you can. Okay. <clears throat> So I um, <clears throat> the lesson for today is called the fall of man. It talks about the differences before and after Adam's and Eve's fall from uh, their sinless state. And if I'm talking too fast, uh, please interrupt me and ask me to slow down or clarify a point. Okay. This follows the uh, lesson from last time where we talked about what was man. So man was God's creation. <clears throat> and here we pick up after man was created and he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So let me see here. So when God created the other living creatures, he spoke to the earth. However, when he created mankind, God spoke to himself. And if you notice at the end of each sentence, uh, in most cases there's a small number, what that refers to is a reference. So you see these re verse references to the scriptures. And then um, in the file, which I hope uh, Joala will share with you, there's also a um, list of the reference scriptures. So all these scriptures are quoted here. I've uh, I'm not reading them out loud because that will take save us some time and uh, make it easier for me to go slower and speak more clearly. But uh, every point in here is referenced to a particular scripture. So um, the other th next, however, when he created mankind, he spoke to himself. So there's a clear distinction here between the other living creatures, the other members of the animal kingdom and mankind. So God spoke to the earth and the birds and the fishes and the beasts of the earth came into being. But when God made man, he spoke to himself. So that is a clear distinction that man is special. Then God also yes, blessed. God said, uh, let us make man in our image. So he spoke to himself. Right. And if you'll notice, there's a little two there that refers to Genesis 1 verse 26. So you can go and look up those verses later. So God also blessed mankind to multiply and gave them dominion over his creation. So that's important there. So a lot of people say God is in control of the world. This is not true. That's heres heresy. The truth is that God gave man uh, control over the world. And later on, we'll read in the scriptures, not in this lesson, but a future one, that man actually surrendered that control to Satan. And then when Christ um, went through his passion on the cross, uh, he bought all of that back. And he, he now shares that authority with us. And that's a, that's a whole nother lesson. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so God gave mankind every plant yielding seed and every tree yielding fruit for food. So at that point, he did not give man meat uh, to eat, only um, the uh, plants yielding seed and trees yielding fruit for food. And this will also tell you, since he gave them every plant and every tree, that at that time, every tree and every plant was good to eat. There was no inedible plants. So God gave every green plant to animals for food. So the animals had every green plant for food. And so if, um, and then God called the creation good. And I emphasize the word good because later on in another lesson, I will talk about the difference between good and perfect. Uh, the coming <clears throat> world that God is going to give us will be perfect. The difference is between them is that both of them were good and that they were complete and there was nothing wrong with them. There was no evil at the time. However, something that is good has no evil, but it is corruptible. Something that is perfect is not only good, but it is incorruptible. So that's a, that's also a, another lesson, but I wanted to make that distinction. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. <clears throat> so the Sabbath of rest was instituted, and that was from the very beginning. 
Now, in those times, it didn't rain, but a mist rose from the earth and watered the plants. And God created a garden called Eden, where he placed Adam to maintain and guard it. So he had two jobs. One was to maintain it. The other one was to guard it. Now, his wages for his service to God was to eat from any tree in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mankind was allowed to eat from the tree of life and therefore he enjoyed perfect health and immortality. Uh, a, a more detailed lesson on the tree of life <clears throat> will show you that eating the fruit gave one uh, immortality. So as long as one had regular access to eating the fruit, you would not age or die. The leaves of the tree of life uh, healed. So if you got injured or sick, those leaves would heal the injury or the sickness. <clears throat> Again, that's another lesson. Then um, mankind uh, so well, had neither sin nor shame. So they were naked and they weren't, weren't ashamed. So at that time, we dwelt in a, a state of um, sinlessness and had no shame. And since they were naked, we may presume that the weather had no extremes of heat or cold. So they had no need for clothing or other uh, protection from changes in the weather. So there was a peaceful harmony between mankind and the animal kingdom. So man had dominion and the animals obeyed man. So that was important. And man's work was nearly effortless and fundamentally simple. There was no stress, there was no pain involved. <clears throat> um, and we may presume that man uh, being made in God's image and having not fallen at that point, he will, uh, <clears throat> he could actually literally command creation, that is the um, supposedly inanimate parts of the world to conform themselves to do his will. So uh, later on, we'll see an example of that when Moses speaks to the rock and it produces water. Moses also spoke to the land and it swallowed up God's enemies. So um, the land could uh, spew out things like water and could swallow up things like bad people. Well, at that time, that wasn't necessary. So um, man, really, all he had to do was speak and it was done. So it was extremely easy. There was also, and um, it also says that uh, there was harmony between a man and his wife. So there was no disagreement between a man and his wife, uh, Adam and Eve. And apparently childbearing was easy and caused only minor discomfort at most. So life was good. And most importantly, man had daily fellowship with God that gave him essentially unlimited access to his creator. So it says that every day God would walk in the cool of the garden. Well, this, that was the state of mankind before the fall. And there's a little more things I could elaborate on that, but that's all I had time to prepare for this lesson. But then after the fall, things changed rather radically. After the judgment of God on Adam, Eve, and the serpent, they were all cast out of the garden. It's not stated if the garden continued to be worked or maintained, but thereafter the garden was guarded by, guarded by an angel. And I will say it's, it's not just any angel, but it's a cherubim. And if we look in the other scriptures at what cherubim are and what their function is, these are angels that have direct access to God. They surround his throne and they basically guard uh, God himself. So cherubim are the most powerful angel. So <clears throat> no man would be able to challenge him and no other angel would be able to challenge it either. It's the highest of all angels. Michael is a cherubim. Um, and then they guarded it with a flaming sword to prevent any person, or I presume even creature, from entering the garden and eating of the tree of life. So at that point, um, he no longer had access to immortality, and he no longer had access to healing. Man's newly ordained work included both agricultural and animal husbandry. So if you remember, before the creation served him, the animals would do what he told them to. But now in agriculture and husbandry, both, it's a relationship of dominance or force. So the 
the farmer plows the fields. He doesn't speak to it and call forth the grain. And he has to teach the animals and, and constrain them with fences and leashes and other things. So again, now force is involved, not just the will or the voice of a command of man, but he has to do it by force. Now, sin increased with the introduction of murder. If we know the story of Cain and Abel, now uh, jealousy uh, by Cain towards his brother Abel um, caused him to murder his brother. So Cain then moved away from the presence of God. So it says that after uh, Cain murdered Abel, God cursed him. And um, he could no longer dwell among the other uh, people of his race because there was um, a chance they would try to take revenge on him for killing his brother. I'm sure they were unhappy about that. Um, but so he moved away from the presence of God. So the presence of God was still there, probably uh, somehow associated with the Garden of Eden, but in that region. And that region was called Havilah. Um, and then men can, mankind began to dwell in cities. So instead of having a garden built by God, men began to dwell in tents and build cities. They also had to make their own music and learn to fabricate artifacts. So up until this time, man did not need to have a dwelling place. The um, Garden of Eden was perfectly temperate. And the... Um, he had needed no need for shelter because there was no rain or snow. Uh, there was only a mist that came up and watered the ground. But after this, um, he needed a shelter. Uh, he started in tents and then built cities. But apparently there was also a music that somehow came from the presence of God. It's not really a lot said about that. It's more implied than it is stated. But they began to make music and they also began to make tools. So Again, this is a case of man having to create for himself um, an artificial version of what God had given Adam and Eve in the garden. In the third generation from Adam, men began to call upon the Lord. That is in contrast or as opposed to having God come to them. So in the Garden of Eden, God would come to them. But now men uh, were alienated from God and they would call on God to invoke his presence, we presume. Then approximately 900 years after the fall, when Adam was 930 years old, men began to die a natural death. And Adam was the first one to die, and he died at 930 years. And then as the population of mankind grew, um, another being called the sons of God, there isn't a lot of uh, elaboration on exactly what the sons of God are, but apparently they are a being that dwells in heaven because it says that they're in the presence of God in heaven. And even Satan was among the sons of God, but it doesn't say that he was actually a son of God. It's presumed he was a cherubim, that is a type of angel. Anyway, the sons of God, they took wives of the daughters of Adam. And so they were able to uh, have sexual relations with uh, the women and Children were born to them, and this was a hybrid race, and they were called the Nephilim. Uh, the Nephilim, um, it's, the, the word kind of means perverted or uh, crooked, um, but it also refers to a race of giants. They were talked about as being some of the mighty men of old and renowned, so they were presumably larger and stronger than um, just simply the sons of Adam. And then um, at this time also evil mindedness increased and it eventually dominated the whole culture so that mankind only thought about evil. And this grieved God and to limit the scope of personal evil, he set a limit on the human lifespan at 120 years. So at that time, uh, people were living to nearly a thousand years. Methuselah was uh, almost a thousand years and uh, but he set the limit at 120 years so um from the time that god told moses or not moses but noah that he would uh, destroy the earth there was 120 years so at that time the person born the same year 
that Noah was told by God to build the ark would have been 120 years at the time of the flood. So um, this also, the flesh became corrupt. So there was interbreeding, not only between the sons of God and, and the daughters of Adam, but there was also interbreeding between uh, human beings and the animals. So the flesh just became corrupted. And God had was forced really to wipe out all humans and animal life, except for the family of Noah. That's Noah, his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yepheth, and their three wives, and the few remaining uncorrupted animals. Now, at this time, animals had become divided into two types, clean and unclean. The, um, a lot of debate on what exactly this means, but uh, my understanding here is that if an animal is clean, it's not likely to be demonized, so that if one butchers and eats it, there's not a risk of uh, receiving a demon in that. But if it's unclean, for example, like a pig, and we know the story about the, um, uh, the Gerasenes when uh, de uh, Jesus cast out demons from uh, de uh, demonic into uh, pigs, so pigs could receive demons. Um, and then after the flood, there was a distinct seasons on earth. So we had, now we had spring, summer, autumn, and winter. So after the flood, we also had extremes of heat and cold. Then after the flood, mankind was given a limited dominion over the animal kingdom in that all creatures would fear men. So in the, when Noah came off the flood, um, God gave him a kind of dominion over the earth where he gave him the animals would fear him, would fear mankind. Uh, but there was no longer the harmony between man and the animal kingdom where the animals would obey mankind. Now they merely feared him. Uh, we, we Also, we can see in our present time that people have learned to uh, train animals and to uh, if they get them young enough and train them properly, they can also uh, get that cooperation and harmony back again. But it has to be worked at. It's not something automatic. Um, and man was also given a new responsibility, and that was to avenge bloodshed. So in the time of Cain, when Cain killed Abel, uh, God had to put a mark on Cain to prevent people from taking revenge on him. But after the flood, uh, God had had enough of violence among men, and so he delegated uh, the vengeance to mankind, but in only one specific case. If, if man stole or if man, um, say, harmed a person but didn't kill them, <clears throat> that vengeance was still belonged to God. But if a man killed another man, it was now the responsibility of the remaining people to put the murderer to death. So that is basically the fall of mankind and the difference between the before the fall and after the fall. So that's, uh, that's the lesson for tonight. Are there any questions? Not from me. Uh, any questions, anyone? So the separation of uh, clean and unclean animals was uh, before the flood? Yes. The division of clean and unclean animals was before the flood. Okay. okay. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, at the time of uh, the Garden of Eden, but it was somewhere between mm -hmm. the expulsion from the garden and the uh, flood. So I heard some explanation, I think from Kevin said, I am not sure, about um, uh, the flood uh, and uh, so who, who, what are demons? As in, uh, they are not fallen ones. They are not, the angels have their own body, so they cannot enter other bodies or something, but uh, during this uh, flood, whatever the spirits, uh, whatever the people died, so their spirits are the probably the um, demons. So um, I think that's what I remember. 
So what uh, Kevin Zadai taught is that the um, hybrid races that uh, existed before the flood were creatures that were um, basically crosses between humans and animals. And so these were spirits that God had not permitted to uh, come to earth, but they came uh, outside of his will. Jesus refers to them when he talks about a um, thief uh, not going in through the gate, but coming over the wall. So there was some some barrier between uh, heaven and earth that some spirits apparently crossed, and they entered into these, uh, they basically created these uh, hybrid races. And he says that the um, when these creatures died, uh, they were not part of God's um, plan, so they don't have... Um, like a purpose the way people do or ordinary animals and therefore they are uh, eventually destined to go to hell but there is a distinction between them and angels so there were three cherubim around the throne of god uh, michael gabriel and the uh, lucifer lucifer rebelled against god and with the third of angels that were assigned to him uh, those angels were defeated by the other two uh, cherubim and their angels. And then they, these angels were bound and put in hell, and that's where they remain now. For example, one of those angels' names is Apollyon, and that angel has actually uh, authority over what's called the pit, or the bottomless pit, um, the abyss, it's also called. Um, so they they can't leave hell uh, so the demons are other spirits they're called unclean spirits which um, basically means imperfect or corrupted or perverted or filthy and these um kevin zadai said he had a revelation that they are the uh the spirits that were in the hybrid races on earth at the time of the flood <coughs> Um, if you look into this matter in scripture too, um, there's also an indication that at least some demons are created after the flood um, by uh, idolatry. When humans worship uh, false gods or demons, God actually compares that to uh, prostitution or called it whoredom. So it's considered a sexual relation uh, between a human and a demon that when someone goes into a temple of a false god um, god actually calls considers that to be uh, adultery towards him um, so one would think if it's a sexual relationship between a human and a demon uh, idol worship is that uh, there may be a byproduct of that too so that's another theory um, i don't have revelation on that but that uh, idolatry produces demons. Um, good reference to that is the scriptures say that idolatry defiles the land. And the term defiled land refers to land that is uh, inhabited by demons. So those are um, two possible sources for demons. Um, okay. Okay. I'm stopping the recording now.